hello welcome to the area solutions channel in this video we're looking at an example that borders on normal and tangential coordinates for curvilinear motion and we're going to walk through this example in which a vehicle starting from rest travels on a curve path of radius 400 meters and attained a speed of 20 meters per second and we are to calculate the total acceleration of a vehicle at that time given that the total distance traveled of course, along the curve path is 178.89 meters. So we are going to walk through this by first um, identifying what has been given to us and what is required of us to calculate. And based on the question, we're told that the vehicle starts from a race that informs us that the initial velocity is zero and moves on the curve path. And the radius of the curve path, we're told it's 400 meters. And it attained the velocity, which is now our final velocity at the point in time being considered to be 20 meters per second. We are told to calculate the total acceleration of the vehicle at, as at the time, given that the total distance traveled is 178.8 meters. To solve the problem, we have to first bring forth all that we've identified, the different variables that have been given to us, and what we are asked to look for, which is the total acceleration. The next is to call forth the formulation that we can use to find the total acceleration. For this case, we have the basic equation for acceleration, that A is equal to the sum of the term of the square of the two components that makes up the acceleration. That's the normal component, which is, which is the acceleration that tends to drag the body towards the center of the curve. And the tangential component of the acceleration, which is the uh, component of the acceleration with which the vehicle or any particle as the case may be, would move through the curve path. So to calculate these two components, we have that the normal component is equal to the square of the final velocity, that is velocity at the instant of time, divided by the radius of curvature. Why the tangential component can be calculated by relating the variables that defines the motion geometry using some of the basic equations that has been derived for a linear motion. For this case, we have three equations now. Based on what has been given to us, that's all our variables. We have that, if we look at the first equation, we see that we have final velocity, initial velocity, time and acceleration. Of course, time and acceleration is not known, so we cannot use this equation to find our unknown. Then also, if we look at the second equation, we have that time and acceleration is also present and these are two unknown. So this equation may also not be valid. And finally, if we look at the third equation, we see that the only unknown there is acceleration. We have a um, final velocity, we have initial velocity, and we have distance, all of which we are given. So this equation becomes a valid one for us to be able to determine the tangential component of the acceleration. So we have two key equations to find the two unknowns based on which we can calculate the total acceleration. So to walk through this, we first have to look for the normal component of the acceleration, which is equal to the square of velocity divided by radius of curvature. Of course, these, are, these variables have been given, so we impute them into the equation and we calculate our unknown value of normal acceleration, and the answer is 1.1 meter per second squared. In the same vein, if we call for the equation that we found use that we found useful to estimate our tangential acceleration, and if we impute all the variables that have been given to us, we can therefore estimate our tangential component of acceleration to be 1.12 by making that equation subject of formula. Then, having gotten these two values of equation, next we may want to impute these two values into the equation for total acceleration to get the total acceleration with which the vehicle was moving. And if we do that, we're going to finally get our total acceleration A to be 1.5 meter per second square. And we may want to work through this problem. The difference between this problem and the previous one we've worked through is that for this case, we're given the value of the acceleration, that's the total acceleration, and we're told to calculate the distance traveled by the vehicle and the time taken to reach that position. So we just walk through the same procedure to find the tangential component. That you find the normal component based on what we have and the equation that we've been given. We look for the tangential components, this case from um, 
the total acceleration by subtracting subtracting the normal component vectorially from the total acceleration. Then we use this tangential component to work through using the kinematic equations that relate acceleration components and the given velocities to find the displacement. Once that is done, we can use any of these equations as well to find the time. So this is the simple procedure to estimate this problem that is similar to the previous one that we just solved. I think this will be all for now. I do hope that um, the video was worthwhile and um, please do well to subscribe to my channel. Thank you for your time. Bye for now.